So this is the third video from my buddy Lisa's 1912 house. The first one was about the wiring I did on her ADU out there, uh, which has since been sheetrocked and we're waiting for it to be mudded and painted before I go out and put all the electrical devices in. The second one was a goofy one about fixing a GFCI in this kitchen. And the third one, this is a long-standing problem that's been this way for years. Like a lot of kitchens, she has a three-way switch. There's a switch at each end of the kitchen so you can uh, turn these overhead island lights on and off. So if I flip that, it goes off. Uh, the problem is, of course, if I go, there's another switch behind you that you can't see. But let me flip that up. That turned them off. And now I should be able to go back here and turn them on. Oh, but it doesn't work. Which tells me we have a broken traveler uh, somewhere. But why don't we take a, just a quick look and, and um, uh, I'll show you quickly schematically how this works. I won't spend much time on it and then we'll troubleshoot. All right. So uh, juice comes in here, and ideally there's a light out here. This is the classic arrangement, and there's a neutral. And uh, so the, the juice goes down either one traveler or the other traveler, um, depending on the position of these switches. I've never known why they call them three-way switches. They have three terminals, but then they should be called three terminal switches. And they only have uh, double throws. There's only two throws. And if you have two of them, there are four possible combinations of the switches. Um, but anyway, so this schematically is what it ideally looks like. Uh, physically, it may be quite different. I mean, it's great if you have a box here that the power comes in, and it's great here if you have a second box here that goes out to the light. But there's all kinds of ways to actually wire this uh, physically to get this arrangement or some, you know, small variation on it. I mean, some people tie the commons together and stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy dangerous things you can do. Um, but if you look at it like it was binary, where zero is down and one is up, because there is no on and off to this kind of switch. It's either just sending current this way or this way. Um, if you think about it as binary, these are all your, your four um, uh, combinations. Zero, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Let me go ahead and I'll test this and, and uh, we'll see what the current situation is. So I just ran all the four combinations and th these are my results. So think of this zero zero was on. So if you think of this down and down, current's running through this traveler and life is great. If uh, one is up and the other is down, it's off. If you flip it and this one's up and this one's down, it's off. But one one here, where they're both on this other traveler here, should be on and it's off. So this traveler's broken or one of these switches is not throwing into this position. So let's turn the power off, get the boxes open, and see what we have. I have no idea what we'll find. So this is the switch I was standing by at the top of the video. It's the only one I've opened, and I've disconnected the two traveler wires. And uh, this is either the load to the lamp in an ideal world or the line into the, to the circuit. Don't know which yet. We'll, we'll figure that out. Power's out off, of course. But first, I want to test this switch. Now, if you look at my schematic, you'd, you'd think maybe power goes in here, and the switch throws it you know, to this terminal or this terminal, but that's not the way it works. The power... Uh, or the, the, the common terminal is up here, and it is thrown to um, this side or this side, the two screws opposite each other. So in one position, I've got this on continuity. Uh, this should be connected. Okay, that's connected to the screw on the back. And now that should be dead, and now it should be connected to the screw on the front opposite. So this switch is okay. Let's try the other box. So this is the other switch you haven't seen. Check this out. Power's supposed to be off. Hmm. So we got to be careful going in here. I don't know if there's another circuit running through this box or, or something crazy. It's about to get interesting. I got to tell you, this circuit runs all over the house and runs all kinds of weird things. So I think there's a lot of splices and crazy stuff going on somewhere, but hopefully that's all on the line side, not on the load side of this. But uh, we've got to be careful. I'm going to put my gloves on and we'll open this up. So you can see right away, this is an older metal box. Now I took the meter and measured this six ways to Christmas and against the box and everything, and I'm getting no voltage. Well, less than a volt, 300 millivolts, you know, some transient uh, potential. But uh, if I do this, so I'm assuming there's another circuit around here because I only have turned this one circuit off in the house. So we'll assume that uh, all this is actually dead because uh, it measures that way. Uh, you can see this is, let me see if I get the light down here. You can see this is old cloth covered, uh, Maybe old cloth covered Romex. I know there's knob and tube. I've been told there's knob and tube uh, up in the attic as well. Uh, but I think this takes us back to the, uh, uh, you know, the 1960s or the 1950s on this side. And the other side is new NM cable. So it's, that's a fairly modern 
addition, but it means in the attic somewhere there's a transition from this wire, which has even different color codes. We've got two blacks and a red over there and a white and a black and a red here. Um, so I may do some continuity checks across the room before we go upstairs. I keep this ancient spool of Belden bell wire in the kit so I can do continuity checks at a distance and run long wire to the meter. It, it saved my bacon a bunch of times. It's a great thing to have. Let me see if I can show you this. The light's not so great. So I've connected my Belden wire to the red wire in this box and then it runs all the way along the floor to one side of my meter, which is on this chair and then the black here. And if I touch it to the red in this box, so, so the red wire is intact. Now let's try the white wire. Maybe I should say black wire because it's black in this box and white in that one. And no. So this, this is the side that's broken if there is a God and things are <laughs> wired rationally. Um, I'll test the continuity on, uh, just to make sure there isn't continuity uh, uh, between what I think is, oh, hello. Did I do that wrong? Or is this wired wrong? Interesting. Oh, let's think about that. So, huh. Do, 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 do. Which means that uh, this is wired wrong and, and this is the line or the load? Boy, we better figure out where our power is coming into this system, huh? Let me turn the juice back on and Run some measurements. Okay, well, there's not 120 volts anywhere, but there's like 60 volts everywhere. Da 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 da. So, <laughs> a mystery for Flash Basbo, junior electrician. Um, I'm wondering if this this piece of tape here is to tell me that that is a, a the other traveler. Um, not not sure, but uh, there isn't a clear line coming into either system. Uh, there's 60 volts on both boxes between uh, ground or neutral, as best I can get a ground or a neutral. And, uh, you know, the various conductors I think are hot. The white one in this, this case. Yeah, there's like 60 volts floating around everywhere. So I'm going to turn the circuit off. I think I'm going to put the beeper on this. Let's go up to the attic and look around and see what's going on. But, uh, you know, there's a nail or something going through something somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to put the toner on the red wire and ground. This is a toner for telephone circuits, so it's not really for this, but, you know, hopefully it'll work okay. So, I've never been up there, so I don't know how hard it is to find things, so this may help a little bit. Here, check out this trick attic light switch. I guess this is easier than actually moving the switch to this beam. So naturally, uh, plywood has been laid down over the rafters and uh, they're using this for storage because it's so uh, big. In fact, here's a little, little piece of knob and tube and you can hear my tone far away. If I go over here, so we know it's kind of, <laughs> kind of in here somewhere. Oh man, I, I slid a storage unit out of the way. This is the edge of the plywood that's been put down. Check this out. Unfortunately, you know, this circuit runs all over the house. So it's hard to know whether I'm just coupling into the line or whether this is really the traveler stuff. There's two more over here. Not as loud. This one really seems like the, like the guy. It runs across here. It's got suitcases and stuff on it. We're moving towards this, this, the switch you first saw me at, at the top of the video. Uh, you know, this uh, attic has permanently installed stairs, so all these wires are supposed to be protected now to a uh, height of seven feet, ha ha. <laughs> Uh, but assuming this is all intact, I still don't see a transition to the uh, modern white Romex here, assuming this is really 
Huh. Oh, wait. Uh, found this junction box, which looks like our transition from the uh, cable in the first box to the cable in the second box. And I'm assuming the light load is being picked up on this cable as it comes over here in the middle. It's fainter. Um, so I can't believe it's incredibly lucky that this uh, plywood stops here. Of course, this nasty insulation and stuff. Yeah. Huh. So, <clears throat> gee, I was going to leave this, but I probably have another hour maybe. So maybe I should open this box up and see if we can make <clears throat> sense of uh, the wiring going on here. Maybe we'll see something obvious. Hopefully things aren't... <coughs> messed up um i need a mask there's a bunch of fiberglass up here <coughs> hopefully it's just something in this box not something squishing the unprotected wire up here well i got my covid mask on now and that's helping with the fiberglass but uh, dang this is just a transition from one cable to another it has nothing to do with the switch leg there's not enough conductors in it it's, it's, it's 214 instead of 314 so this is not it. Yeah, so a lot of problems. I don't know if you're ever going to be able to address this without uh, moving some of that stuff in storage and taking up some of the floorboards. And, and then there's the 60 volt stray voltage on that circuit, because I say it runs all over the house, so it's been patched like, like crazy, you know. And uh, obviously there's, <laughs> there's some path to ground where there shouldn't be, um, or path to the ungrounded conductor where there shouldn't be. So just for grins here, as I was screwing things back together in this box, I wired it the way I thought it should be wired, with that black wire with the tape on it uh, as a traveler, and the white as the line in, if this really is the line. And I'll be darned if the lights are working perfectly now. So still a little worried about the 60-volt stray current and the wire up there, but uh, <laughs> the darn thing's working. I'll relabel this white as a black, uh, but yeah. It's on, and then, and then off, and then, uh, uh, let's see, I guess this is the other, and then the other way is back on, and then this one needs to turn it off. So, <laughs> there you go. Should have just trusted my instincts, I guess, and wired it, but, uh, suppose we wouldn't have uncovered all the problems up in the attic either, so it's kind of good to know. Uh, uh, so I guess that's the end of this video with uh, some unexpected success. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Well, now, hang on just a minute. I hope you'll indulge me. I had finished this video and uploaded it to YouTube and scheduled it to go out, but I really wanted to add a epilogue to it to kind of explain a little better what we found uh, that I don't think was clear in the live video we shot there on uh, location. So uh, if you remember the picture I drew in her kitchen, uh, this is the, cl the classic arrangement. This is one switch, this is the other switch, the three dots are the switches, the three screws, and it, you know, it throws the power this way or this way or this way or this way. And this is what we expected uh, to find. And notice how the switches are beautifully symmetrical. Um, they're kind of mirror images of each other. Uh, what we found instead was um, the box I was standing on at the top of the video seemed to be wired correctly. Um, so you had this situation and then we had our red traveler wire that went across to both boxes and beeped out okay. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this switch and turn it so the common is down because I think it'll be a little easier to draw. Does this make sense? Now they're not symmetrical anymore, so we already know there's, <laughs> you know, there's something uh, uh, crazy going on. And then this other traveler, this was the uh, black wire with the tape on it, had a little piece of tape there, um, was connected to the common one in, in this box. And then this went out either to the line or to the load. We never actually did figure that out. So you can see if the switch is in this position, no matter how you turn this switch, nothing will happen. So essentially, I rewired it to be this up here which is what you'd expect. Uh, the interesting question is, how did it get to be this way? And as I alluded to briefly in the video, there are a couple of oddball ways to wire these things uh, where you use the common in an unusual way. So you essentially p point the pivot in like this. 
and I'm not going to go into the, the details of these, um, except that um, they're all illegal now. Uh, one, because it's unsafe, uh, the Carter method, and the other because uh, it doesn't have a neutral in at least one of the boxes, which is the, uh, the California or coastal um, three-way. Um, uh, but uh, what the unsafe one used to be used in real old houses uh, uh, with knob and tube wiring, so perhaps this is some vestige of that. Um, so you can imagine um, doing one of these oddball schemes where maybe the light's here um, and, and wiring one switch this way and then someone comes along later and adds another switch and does it the classic way and then doesn't test it very well and I guess, you know, it never works. That's the best I can figure. I can't see how it ever worked, uh, although I'm told it, it kind of was. Uh, two other mysteries uh, that we didn't uh, solve were the 60 volts everywhere um, that I measured. I googled online a little bit and it seems that people have seen that situation with neon light, you know, uh, switches with a neon light in it to light them up in the dark when they're off. Uh, Lisa says neither of her switches were that way, but I guess when those fail they act like a little halfway rectifier diode and, and would cut the voltage in half. Um, that's not it in this case, but maybe there's another load somewhere, or maybe the compact fluorescence in the fixtures are doing something, I don't know. That's one of the reasons I went into the attic to try to figure out how it was actually wired. Um, but obviously that was, <laughs> there were problems with that. Uh, the other mystery we had is why the inductive pickup was going off with the, um, uh, in that one box with the power off. And then looking at the video again, you can see that's a bundle of cables in the wire. So there's probably another pair, pair right next to the, the switch leg coming down into the box with the fancy um, switch plate. And that was causing that problem. Okay, that's it. Thanks for putting up with this coda. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.